Hello everybody and welcome, I'm Cirrus and today I will be bringing you, due to popular request, my staff build for the alley. It's a build that I've had in my mind for ages and I'm not entirely sure why I haven't shared it earlier as the alley was the first character I made in Guild Wars 2. Anyway, this build brings massive amounts of damage to the battlefield while still being able to survive through clever play and the use of our tools at our disposal. If you have any comments or requests, please drop them below and I'll see what I can do about them. Alright, with that out of the way, let's get on to it. Now, the stats on our equipment we want to go is full berserkers, just to get the most, most damage we can out of this build. For our ruins, we want to take the superior ruins of Holbrick. These extend the duration of our might from our blast finishes, and they also reduce the duration on uh, incoming conditions as well. For our staff, we want to take the superior sigils of battle and bloodlust, as these two particular sigils are great in increasing our, uh, in, in increasing our power. Now, my current staff is an Assassin's one, I'd like an Ascended Berserker staff, but I got this as a drop from a Fractal, so I decided I'd rather use it over the um, exotic Berserker staff that I used to use, as I've yet to level my Artificing to 500. But by all means, get yourself an Ascended Berserker staff if you can. Um, if you are like me and ha manage to get an Assassin's one, well then all the more power to you, just use it over the exotic um, Berserker's one, otherwise an exotic Berserker staff will just do fine is it cheap and easy to get. Now the last thing is that our accessories will join us with the rest of our gear in being full berserkers as well. The stat choice will give us some um, great area denial abilities as we will do massive damage with our ground targets. If anyone's foolish enough to stay in them they're just going to be taking a serious beating. Okay first up for our skills we have E3 Renewal. E3 Renewal is a channeled heal. It has a low cooldown and cleanses all conditions from you. As long as you're mindful of the enemy's CC to not be interrupted, then it becomes a very powerful heal indeed. Make sure you couple it with Armor of Earth if you desperately need to heal, that way you're guaranteed to get the full heal from it as you can't be interrupted. Next up we have Lava Axe. Lava Axe is a pretty amazing skill. I'll cover the details of the skill later on in the build as there is a lot to cover. For our utility skill number 2 we have Mistform. Mistform plays well into our build as it gives us a stun break and allows us to absorb incoming burst for a few seconds by providing us with invulnerability. For our third utility skill we have Armor of Earth. Armor of Earth provides us with a second stun break with added stability and protection for 7 seconds. To top it all off due to our trait selection it also grants us an additional 3 stacks of might which lasts 24 seconds, making it a very decent skill indeed. For our elite skill we will be taking Glyph of Elementals. In past builds we would take Fiery Greatsword, but with the recent nerfing of Fiery Rush and Lightning Flash I prefer now the Glyph of Elementals as it provides solid benefits in combat with a decently low cooldown as well attached to it. Now with this build, we have many combinations of skills at our disposal. Here are some of my favourite tricks that I like to do. First up, we have a small quirk with Lava Font. It's got no cast time and a long aftercast. So what you can do is if you cast a spell straight after casting it, it'll put it straight onto cooldown, allowing you to cast Lava Font more often. This means more damage and it's great. It, most people do it by accident and they don't actually realise that it's happening. I can show you this right now. Here we go. There you go, initially it casts it and then it goes on cooldown and it's taking a long time and the lava form will disappear and then you put it back up. But if I cast a skill straight after it, it'll go straight into cooldown and I'll be able to cast it straight away again before it even disappears. This allows you to pretty much have a permanent fire field if you're staying in the fire achievement, which we don't always do, but if we just want to sit back and DPS, then it's great. It's a great thing to do. Now with the staff, the default chain I go to is I cycle between fire and earth achievements, chaining the blast finishes in order to grant might and fury to me and my companions. What you do is you cast Lava Font first and then you quickly switch to Earth and cast Eruption in it and it should go. the Eruption should go off in time in the Lava Font to give you a Blast finisher. 
Then when the cooldowns are up again of eruption and you're a fire attunement, you cast eruption and you swap back to fire and you can cast lava font on top of that and get another blast from shit and you can just keep chaining that um, just as a default thing while you're not casting other abilities. If we need a massive burst of healing, what we can do is cast eruption from earth and switch to water, cast healing rain on top of it, cast your lava axe, do your blast finisher and your leap finisher from lava, lava axe and then do a dodge roll and you're getting just a huge amount of heals in that small period just from the, all those combo finishes alone. It's one of the main strengths of the, of the staff is you've got access to just many many types of combo fields and combos. It's, it's a, overall a very great weapon. Generally with the staff what you want to do is keep your CC effects out of your rotation so that you can use them when they'll be most effective in protecting your allies and yourself, creating kill opportunities or just controlling your enemy's movements. An additional combo that I like to perform sometimes is to get a decently long duration of frost armor by first being in the earth attunement and casting eruption, then switching to water to cast frozen ground and then using the blast and leap finisher from the lava axe as well to get over 8 seconds of frost armor as this can be devastating against some opponents. Now at this point in time you might all be wondering why we are bringing Lava Axe into this build. The Lava Axe is actually one of the most underrated skills that we have on the alley, as it brings with us two hard hitting abilities which double as combo finishes. They are Explosive Lava Axe and Flame Leap. Explosive Lava Axe is a very low cooldown making it great for blast finishes. The auto attack also grants Might Now, which was a, a recent change to it. It has two fire fields in, in it as well. You've got Burning Retreat, which is undocumented on the skill itself, in its tooltip, and Ring of Fire. Um, Burning Retreat itself is a, an Evade, which is great for our survivability, and Flame Leap closes the gap and is a leap finisher at the same time. To top it all off, this only costs you just one utility slot. What I find it's what I find it's best to do with Lava Axe is to just use the abilities that you need at the time from it, then just discard it. If you need it again while it's still on cooldown, you can always pick up the second copy. Generally, you'll only go through those two copies and you won't need it anymore until the cooldown is up. Which is great, it's, it's a very good skill to use and is uh, very underrated. One last thing before we move on is that the oldest combo field on the spot will be the one that gets activated. So just keep that in mind when you're rapidly cycling through your skills if you need to overlap your combo fields. For our traits we want to go 6 into fire, 2 into water magic and 6 into arcana. The 6 in fire provides us with good power and access to one of the best traits an ally can get. The added power and condition duration is a welcome addition as well as this increases our damage and allows us to utilize our soft CC conditions to a much longer effect. These conditions are things such as chill, cripple and immobilize. The two points into water provides us with a nice 100 healing power and 100 vit, which is sorely needed in our build due to the our inherent squishiness derived from our stat choices. Six points in Arcana is awesome as it allows us to switch attunements at the speed that the alley was made for, as the attunements will cool down at a faster rate, I believe it's 9 seconds I think. The uh, six points in Arcana also boosts the durations of our boons and the major traits in the Arcana line are very strong as well for a Staff Alley. For our first minor trait in the Fire line we have Flame Barrier. Flame Barrier provides us with a 20% chance to burn the enemy when hit. It's not the most powerful trait but there isn't too much we can do about it due to it being a minor trait which we have to take if we want the other traits down further in the line. Next up we have the trait Spell Slinger. Spell Slinger provides us with 3 stacks of might each time we cast a cantrip, which is excellent for our build due to the cantrips we utilize. Our master minor trait is Sunspot. Sunspot inflicts AoE damage around us when we attune to fire. It's a nice damage bonus that works well when we're standing close to our target when chaining our blast finishes. For our master major trait we have two skills, we have Pyromancer's Alacrity and Burning Fire. Pyromancer's Alacrity reduces the cooldown on our fire skills by 20% which is great for when we want to do some more damage in our build. If we are going into a situation where there's a lot of conditions flying around though I recommend swapping out this trait for Burning Fire. Burning Fire is a great trait as this gives us an automatic cleansing fire which deals AoE burn around us, around us and cleanses three conditions. It's also affected by the traits that affect our cantrips. Our next trait, Burning Rage, is a minor trait, but it's very good. Burning Rage grants us a 10% increased damage against burning foes, which is awesome as we have a decent amount of burning on our enemies in this build. 
A Grandmaster trait in Fire is Persisting Flames. Persisting Flames is one of the best traits we can get as an alley, as it modifies our fire fields to be 2 seconds longer and any of our blast finishes in fire fields will grant an additional 13 seconds of fury to you and those around you. With this trait you basically have 100% uptime on fury which is amazing. Another added bonus is that Lava Font will take additional times as, a longer, as it has a longer duration and increases the skill coefficient from 3.6 to 5.4 due to this longer duration. With that we have our fire traits covered so let's move on to water. First up in water we have Soothing Mist. Soothing Mist is a minor trait which grants a passive heal over time when we attune to water. This passive is also granted to those around you as well. It it's a welcome bonus as it helps keep your health topped up when needed. Our next trait is Cantrip Mastery. Cantrip Mastery reduces the cooldown of our cantrips by 20% which is great as it means our stun breaks are available more often and it also affects our burning fire trait as well if we choose to take it. That there covers the water line, so let's move on to Arcana. For one point in Arcana, we are given the minor trait Arcane Fury. This trait isn't the greatest trait for our build as we have near Perma Fury, but it does help in the initial stages of the fight when we have yet to grant ourselves Perma Fury. We can, however, stack Fury before a fight, making this trait near pointless for our particular build. For two points into Arcana, we get Blasting Staff. Blasting Staff is one of the best traits we can get as a Staff Alley as it increases the size of our AoEs of which we have many by a large amount. It also allows our Meteor Storm to be significantly more deadly as each individual Meteor gets a radius increase instead of the area covered by the Meteor Storm itself. Now for our Master Minor trait in Arcana we have Lingering Elements. The tooltip for this trait is a bit drippy as it doesn't actually tell you what the trait does. From my understanding of the trait, it makes it so that the adept minor traits for the attunement lines that you've got points in able to be active for a short time after switching attunement. For instance, if I switch from fire to water, I'll still have flame barrier active for a short amount of time, making it not really that useful a trait. Our next trait is Renewing Stamina. Renewing Stamina is a very powerful trait that grants us basically permanent vigor as we're able to get 6 seconds of vigor every time we crit. This effect does have a 5 second cooldown, but our vigor lasts longer than the cooldown, make it, making it permanent. Dodging greatly increases our survivability, so this trait is a much welcome trait. Our 5 point trait in Arcana is Arcane Precision. This trait has a 10% chance to apply a condition based on our spell attunement when we crit. It's not the best trait, but it's certainly not terrible either. Last but not least, we have the Grandmaster Major trait, Evasive Arcana. Base of Arcana turns our dodges into awesomeness as we're not only able to have the default evade frames, we get an extra added effect based on our attunement at the end of our dodge. The most notable of these effects are the Blast Finisher from Earth Attunement and Cleansing Wave in Water Attunement, which both heals and removes the condition. That there covers our traits, so let's move on to the next section. Alright, with the traits out of the way, I'll throw in some clips of when I was testing out this build. I actually ran out of hard drive space so there isn't too much this time so what I'll do is if there's a demand for it I'll create another video that has some more gameplay demonstration in it. Anyway I'll leave you guys to it.
All right, in summary, we have a really nice staff build, which does great damage and is all around fun to use. Thanks for watching, everybody. And once again, if you like our content, please like, favorite, and subscribe to our channel in this video. If you have any questions, suggestions, comments, or requests, drop them below, and I'll see what I, a bird, can do for you. We plan on doing much more content and types of content in the future and are not stopping anytime soon. This has been Cirrus, and I'll see you next time.